Five, four, three, two, and. Welcome everybody to Blender 3.2 release party. Party. Hey, <laughs> we have a guest. It's been a while since we had a, our guest, but you know, I'm already the live Felinto developer coordinator and, uh, and and developer and and coordinator. <laughs> Product manager of parts of the Blender project. Yeah, like geometry nodes and a lot of areas that that are not the star of the show today because 3.2 it's um in, in terms of geometry now it's, it's we're we're gonna get more news in 3.3 but today it's about 3.2 so it's still a release a release and often we get too excited about the main features that land in a release but a lot of the actual work happens after the release yes and people work on fixing bugs polishing the features and designing what is to come that's not to say that there's no jump to nodes in this release, because there is. Named attributes, we're gonna talk about it. It's a big thing. Yes. Long time coming. But actually, actually, yeah. yes, color attributes. That's a big yeah. one. Okay. Name, so, name and attributes. Uh, and color attributes. As of now, you can already download uh, Blender 3.2, the official release. You can also uh, get it from Steam, from micro from the Microsoft Store. Oh, it's the first. Usually it takes then their uh, their due time we're on linux here so now there's no way to to test at the moment but it should be it should come um so other than than that we can just go through the list of updates we have a video that is published also on this uh, channel where uh, southern shorty made the um the five minutes the all the features in five minutes or less and um also we have a very nice page a very nice page that shows the new features Rich new lights. Yeah, this just a spoiler. I haven't seen this page in a few weeks, to a week at least. So oh, that's true. A bit of surprise for me as well. Yes. Okay. Well, I share the link with uh, here in the chat. So if you want to check it out with, together with us. Um, okay. So uh, the background uh, the artwork is by Oksana Drobopolska. Is an artist uh, from Ukraine. I we found her on ArtStation. And the work she's done for concept art using Blender is just just insane so i recommend highly recommend checking it out uh, at the bottom of the of the page spoiler oops there are um not only the splash screen as well but also all the links to the um to the to the credits to everybody that contributed art in some way to um to, oops i cannot see this oh yeah because i'm not logged in but i should link to her art station though um maybe art um googling live Yes, uh, because Blabaskas. no, no, because I'm I'm uh, I'm not logged in because I wanted to show it in incognito, so everybody we get the same uh, um, the, the same experience experience. But yeah, you should check out her, her work. It's just amazing. It's a mix of Blender and Photoshop, uh, most of the projects, but uh, it's just just awesome. So okay, well, let's go to the top. What's new in Blender besides the video is that there are light groups cycles only but uh light groups uh, for me that goes to to show how the big features might land a few releases ago but then we are already a few months since cycles x was yes. finished and merged into, into blender and i still get new features related to that project we do we do it's um related to that project and also a patch that has been around for a while is uh even on graphical.org the uh, website for community builds of blender there has been a version with light groups for a while now and it's happy i'm happy to see it here coming because there is also new um th there might be new light related patches coming is it coming the i don't i i want to i want to be <laughs> actually the uh, light group features allows you to basically um 
it's a render pass, so you have to use a compositor to mix it up or use another compositor. And then that um, allows you to basically have group different types of lighting in your scene, even the world lighting from the world, from the environment, or even mesh emitting objects. Um, so for example, we have the light here from the from above, we have the light from outside, and say you are not really sure about how much do you want the light from outside to influence our uh, lighting here. So you can basically make two groups and later on in the compositor decide how much you want to uh, each group to contribute. To inf influence the scene. Yeah, to influence the, the lighting of the scene and that it saves so much time and re-rendering time. Mm -hmm. So it's a great solution, you know, for the environment. And as we had this feature for Blender internal, or not even was the other light feature we had. Oh, actually, we had uh, no, uh, yeah, we no. Had Blender internal had like linking. light linking, light linking, yeah. So per yes. layer light control. So we are getting there. No, CCAT six oh nine is not like linking. Mm -hmm. I know um, it's the the name is uh, kind of confusing. It's similar though in a way that you can light only a, a certain objects uh, with certain groups, but you need the um, a, the deep main difference with light linking is that you need the compositor. And light linking is the dynamic or should be dynamic. So yeah, that is like the main difference, but it's still great. And the example here shows the uh, pavilion rendering scene that it's in available in the demo files of uh, blender.org where, where you can also download not only the splash screen, but some other examples, even one that we're going to show later on. The example of the pavilion shows how the combined lighting can be split into interior pool, the pool lighting, the benches, and the environment, the world environment. So those combined show you this result. That's so good. Super nice. Um, Shadow Caustics. Yes, this is also another huge update. It was, um, hmm, I don't see the... Caustics? No. No, the, 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 huh, wait, wait, wait. There. Uh. <laughs> cool. No, the caustic, I see the caustic spot. The website has this uh, beautiful widget that allows you to see the before and the after. So here you can see more clearly how the, um, yeah, the difference basically here. You can even see this with the caustics. You can see how even with the normal map, this is not even modeled. This is not in the actual model. This is just normal map. Oh. The, oh, this so little placement, a more a normal map. It all, yeah, it's just a normal map, it. just a bump. If you look at the model itself, it's uh, very low poly. This is from the Sprite Fright Open Movie Project, where you can see that before, yeah, the light would like leak in here. The I mean, these are the caustics that Cycles had before. It's not that it, it didn't have caustics. There were some caustics. Yeah, but there are some people crazy about caustics that been asking for yeah. something closer to that, maybe even beyond. Do you know if there's any? more coming for caustics not that i i don't uh, know no. either no but it's just like yeah it's night and day and also here you can see how dark the bounce doesn't the light doesn't bounce as much inside whereas here in the new one you can see like the yeah the light bounces and did you have to do any change for this glass material for this to work because you open the files from the project. Actually, there is a number of changes that you need to do because the uh, caustics are a bit of expensive. You do need to specify and be very uh, specific about which objects you want to receive the caustics and um, create caustic, like, uh, yeah, cast caustics. So the changes that you're going to, to need Thanks for asking. I, you made me make a tutorial <laughs> live, <laughs> um, but it's it's good to share. Um, the cycles uh, render engine needs to be enabled, and then once you have that, okay. First of all, caustics are in light paths. Caustics these are on by default, so you here you don't need to change anything mm -hmm. in a new in a new file. But in the objects itself, you need to enable them. So for example, say I want this light to create caustics. You go to the light settings and then you enable oh, okay. shadow caustics. Step one. Step two, I want to have this object to uh, create the caustics, to cast them, right? This ob if this object was made of glass, then uh, you need to um, basically go to the object settings, not the material, this per object. It's good to keep in mind. Go to shading and then make it so it can cast the shadow caustics. If there is another 
um, like glass or other object that is casting shadows and you and over this object you want to enable the receive shadow castings as well um okay so and that goes because it's very expensive to because it's very expensive it's it's, yes. uh, it's meant for production so you can make it only in the objects that you need and then if these objects are not floating in space and they're actually somewhere you want to make the floor in this case to receive the shadow caustics say this this floor was made of uh, bricks or something okay. yeah um but yeah these are the few things that you need to to do that's not too many steps i'm gonna render it no i didn't i didn't set up <laughs> the lighting and uh, it's just i need to go here and i need to make like glass and then you to render it and and then I need to change a few things. Just not gonna get through the trouble. This is a live stream, and you don't have a lot of time, by the way. That's true. Today, so let's uh, let's get with it. And uh, I'm already looking at seeing a change that I want to do <laughs> in the UI. You see, cast shadow caustics, receive shadow caustics. Shadow caustics should be the title, and then should be cast and receive. Um, it's, it makes for the a very short title of the of the. No, like the, the way we do the show in, and then it's two. Mask, mm, okay, this should be here and <laughs> next 3.3. <laughs> <3. 3. laughs> yeah, 3.3. Let's hope for uh let's not hope for a 3.2.1. This okay. Next. Um volume motion blurs. Yes. Oh, this means well that that uh volumes created with Blender or from imported VDV uh, files are uh, that have a um, velocity attribute, they will be uh, rendered with motion blur. So I, I think this this also allows for particles points created with geometry nodes to get motion blur. Oh. Did they, they get it before? I don't. I think it was also related to to this. I commit. think so. Yeah. 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 Well, you are the geometry nodes department here, so yeah. the you can read more about it in the uh, in the wiki page. Most of the links have like uh, either a uh, linking to the wiki or the manual when there is something about it. And there is also more. Uh, there are some op some um, new features that are not they don't fit in a like specific like there is not easy to show or they are just uh, things that you would expect things to have. <laughs> like baking for Udim tiles. Baking to Udim. Yeah. What are we gonna show? Like it's baking, right? Um, like automatically unpause the viewport when switching to render mode. This this is mainly a fix. So it means that if you are when you are uh, yeah when you are rendering and you for example if you're rendering with uh, cycles you can pause something. It would it would uh, be that if you move to um, if you go to solid and then go back it wouldn't resume. And people were like this is stuck and there were bug reports about it actually. I can imagine especially if you share the file. Mm. And you paused the last time you used. And yeah. And someone opens it in material mode and looked at it in a switch there. It's going to be, yeah. And uh, it, it needs to be turned on by default. Um, but that, I think that was probably like a bug report and then it becomes a feature. Um, and then there are many like that. New color, man color management uh, options when you render or also when you save an image. So if you're rendering, and, and say, for example, you are in the output, right? You want to see, um, you want to see with one color management, and you want to save the image with a different color management tool. You can override it. Oh, that's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. And also, if you want to save the image as uh, like a like a save the the render, then you can um, also specify it in the operator itself in the options. Okay. Um, next, I mean, some things are not only a bug report. If you look at the bacon and Udin tiles, we recently got Lucas Stockner to join the team again, receiving a dev grant. Yeah. And Lucas contributed with the original Udin uh, patch. Oh. So it's cool. nice to have you know him be able to work on that again. Absolutely. Yeah. And he was even here in this at the studio recently. So and this part of what a task about improve Udin functionality even nice. yes, created in December 2019. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to get you know Lucas to focus on that thanks to the community support, the dev fund, dev fund grant. Thanks to the okay. development fund people over here. Um, all right, so that is all for cycles plus all these uh, updates and the GPU rendering for Linux. 
all five of you, of us, <laughs> are gonna get GPU rendering for Linux for RDNA and RDNA 2 graphics cards. All right, time to move into the colors, the colorful side of uh, part of color space. Color space, color space, color attributes. So, and this is the first release where a step is taken towards a unified color managed color attribute color managed color attributes as a whole yeah i would say the first thing so we had uv maps vertex colors vertex groups there's two vertex groups yeah and then we wanted more generic attributes like sculpt color painting and this is the first time we then unify all of them i think they were the attributes panel existed already for for one, one release, releases, yeah, yeah, one, one release. At least one release, yes. And one of the motivations that uh, for that panel was because we knew that, for example, for sculpting, we wanted to have a different um, color attributes, color layers, which were not tied to the the old one that we had, which was a ver corner based uh, intended for something else. Yes. Now there is a new color attributes panel, which is it replaces the vertex colors panel and the main addition. I mean, under the hood is a complete is a huge change, but for the from the user point of view, not much has changed other than when you create a new attribute, a new color attribute is gonna let you choose what type. So basically, uh, like fast and non-fast color. Uh, no, the other way around full color or like 32 bit or like 30 or like 8 bit um, vertex or face corner. So the defaults are, if you are just painting, the defaults are the, the, the good ones to, to pick. You can even set a color by default when you create a new one. This is new. This wasn't possible before. And now you have a color. Once you have this color added, you can uh, go into sculpt mode to paint. I know it's confusing, but it, it's actually pretty cool. You may remember this from the um, um, uh, work from Pablo Davaro a time ago. Oh yeah, that's a lot of this was his original design and even a patch that yes. he started implementing some of this. Yes, that was mainly targeted at performance. It also added a bunch of new features, but it's mainly about making it fast to paint in, uh, in, in sculpt mode. Also, when you uh, the, the vertex paint mode is still there for this release, uh, but in the future it might change to be something more generic and where the tools available in Sculpt Paint are also available in vertex paint. So for now, for this one release, you're gonna have to, if you want some specific tools, like if you go to vertex paint, you see not much has changed here, but if you go to Sculpt mode, then you're gonna find the paint, but also smear and within, uh, paint, you have a whole bunch of options that were not available in Vertex Paint. And also you have color filters. So this is huge. It allows you to change entire sections, even smooth, like a, like a, like a blur on those colors. So it's pretty epic. Do you have uh, the demo file or can I show where people can um, download? People can download the examples that are shown here. Actually, I could have shown this when I... <laughs> was uh, more colorful, <laughs> more colorful, but hey, we show it where you can find it in Blender. So um, this demo, it's um, it, it's showing the paintbrush, the so basically how you can paint. You even have like a wet mix effect, which is pretty <laughs> nice. Um, they also have the smear brush and the smear brush has uh, even modes for pinching or expand. So you can smear the regular smear um you can all that does like the regular smear what's the pinching does pinching what do you think it would do it makes it more like a for hair is for use it for clumping for hair clumping pinch and clamp that's a pinch brush yes exactly well for yeah. pinching it's like when you sculpt you know that the, the vertices get together mm -hmm. this because this is vertex uh, color attribute paint like polygon painting you're basically modifying the the vertices, basically data. It's kind of strange. Uh, yeah. um, but um, this example file, by the way, this has like millions of polygons. So um, it also shows the performance. Then uh, masks, you can use masks. You can uh, mask by color even. That's pretty neat. Like the, yeah, like in a painting software, they only want to affect a specific color. 
it will automatically make a mask out of that. And you can also apply color filter tools, which is what I explained before for changing the hue, for changing the uh, contrast in this case, or the smooth, like now. Smooth is very subtle, so you have to do it a few times or change the strength up there. All right, that was quite some. How's the chat going, by the way? We are, we are reading the chat here, so if you have any questions, um, let us know. Yeah, we need, I tried to read, but it's, yeah, people... We need layers with occlusion. Yes, texture, layers. Well, one of the, the strategic targets for this year is the, um, the texture painting. Texture painting project, painting, layering, node-based effects. Yes. Uh, painting much. mostly, yeah. 3D brush support. Yeah, super cool. What are people talking about? Saludos, Calafate. Where is someone from my... Hola. <laughs> Let's uh, continue. So that is uh, for... Well, another great thing that um, it has to do with sculpting and vertex colors or color attributes is that when you remesh, when you use the voxel remesher, the attributes are no longer lost. So again, it's a fix and a feature. This, uh, this is awesome. So you can remesh away and still paint. Yeah, and the attributes are also very important because everything related to geometry nodes now use the generic attributes. Uh, we even, the, the API now for the old vertex color change entirely. Everything related to attributes now is in linear color space, which means it's easier for you to combine, multiply, do operations on them. And what else to say about that? Like really everything, we're using it. To, we're using we, we it. Are, we can integrate, we're integrating, you know, EV and cycles and jump to nodes and sculpting. Yeah. How about UVs? Are they preserved? They should. <laughs> they should. They are. Right? But how can you tell? How can I tell by looking at the UVs? <laughs> and I... Uh, there you go, and then if I remesh in sculpt mode, I remesh to something like larger. Okay, it should. Yep. Yep. Wow, isn't it amazing? And that's, that's also thanks to once again the development fund. This is the work of uh, Joe Eager, Joseph Eager. Yeah. Working with Julian and the rest of the sculpting module. So it's super nice to see the sculpting module still getting a lot of attention. Still getting a lot of attention and uh, also patches from or, or things that were requested in the past and patches by Pablo Duarte also getting, like not getting lost in the in the void, but actually moving forward. So super, super cool. Masking also, um, they are preserved and supported with the color attribute painting. And well, the demo looks amazing. The demo is super nice. This is by Daniel Bystead. Which oh, you can probably else. you can probably <laughs> tell by the by the amazing. Well, I made the video smaller <laughs> for uh, to to keep the the bandwidth low in the website, but yeah, it's just so cool, so cool. Uh, maybe I should upload these videos to like in high resolution to the development channel or or even this channel and list it if you want. People want to see it before. Yeah, that's probably nice. a good idea. Yeah, because I have a full screen videos that Daniel sent us. Um, but yeah, cool. All right, uh, next. Hey, yeah, we got your guy here. Geometry Nodes. Bunch of <laughs> updates, optimizations, performance improvements. It's just, there's a whole lot of Geometry Nodes going on in this release. However, in terms of like new nodes, more like user facing changes are- um, There's not much. As I said, the focus is has been both on moving forward and setting the base for the hair project. Yeah. Which hopefully makes in the next release but also focus on invisible features, as I mentioned. Performance, and there's the named attributes. Named attributes, yes. And there's also, and it's a basically communication, UI, a uh, bit of visibility, but performance. Performance, performance mainly performance. performance. And the one node that I think it's uh, worth uh, mentioning is duplicate elements, which allows you to Duplicate the elements, points, uh, uh, edges, faces, splines, even instances. The the thing is, I still think that a lot of people are very happy that we have the named attribute nodes because they were part of the original jump to nodes implementation. To this day, a lot of the old demos still don't work because they're relying on those nodes. 
Hmm. And we first focused on the design that didn't depend on them. So you could have a, a geometry node group, a node group totally without any hard coded value. And now that this pipeline is good and well established and working well, we have those hard coded named based nodes that are shown all the way, you know, outside of the modifier and the whole in node groups and the whole UI. So we can use them. They're not the recommended way to work, but I can see a lot of people really, really happy about that. Yeah. They've been I, I very vocal in the past about this. For, for shareability uh, also, like if you have a, I mean, a studio pipeline or if you want to share them or like uh, put it online. It's particularly good if you have a material that also rely in an attribute that you create in the geometry node. So yeah. you populate this with geometry node, you can set the material with the geometry node and the name that's hard coded in the material node tree can be also hard coded then in the geometry node. And if you just open that file, you're going to see it in the modifier. Say so that depends on attribute X or Z. Yeah, and it's in, it's actually on the, in the, the new panel that shows up in the geometry nodes internal modifier so this is it's called um internal dependencies and it tells you if i show this is even better uh no named attributes used but if you have they will show up here if they're uh they've been read written or both read and written yeah. you can also enable the new name attributes or it's all on by default to see which name attributes have uh, been used even inside of node groups all right next a big one this request by the community since forever well since the blend <laughs> since the browser as a browser was introduced in 3.0 so um yeah 3.0 had materials and node groups and no 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 node groups and both. world which one are talking three points is 3.0 okay yeah. 3.1 had uh, objects and node groups and 3.2 has collections object was 3.0 as well 3.0 because of the asset bundle demo. oh yes yeah this was object by the way yeah i don't know Post if libraries. I, I the other day i mentioned it on a live stream and not a lot of people are aware that there is this amazing public domain uh library with with uh with assets like a uh, wood chair a little uh, laptop even there is a whole bunch of uh, of assets in this uh, library by the blender studio it works both as a way to learn how to use the tool but honestly also with as a way to get a lot of nice stylized materials yeah for your own library it is super cool and um and it's by it's public domain so you can do whatever you want with it um in this demo i'm using a i'm using a file that it's also provided on the demo files, not public domain, but it is available in here, the Italian flat by F Flavio della Tomazza. Um, yeah, so click track. There is no snapping yet. It was one of the showstoppers, but it wasn't as easy like uh, to to add. And it would we would rather have asset collections without uh, snapping rather than not having it at all right yeah no, it's there's a lot of polishing that can happen for the existing assets that are supported yeah we talked about that yesterday we want jump to nodes to be available in the modifier or mm. in the add menu in the node tree we want materials to show up in the material template but i guess the first step is to support the, the basic uh, data type yeah absolutely Curve Pen Tool. This is a new uh, tool based on that it was worked on during the Summer of Code, uh, Google Summer of Code from last year, mm -hmm. and it made it into 3.2. This allows you to create curves by using a familiar pen style tool that you click, drag, and it will just keep adding and allows you to tweak the handles as you are creating a curve. It takes a while to, if you've never used anything like this, it takes a little bit to get used to it. But once you do, it is pretty, pretty handy. This is pretty common in other, in other software, in every other software, basically vector, vector graphics software. Um, one thing that I like about this particular tool is that once you are, for example, if you have, you're creating curve, 
is that once you have the curve, then you can just click and drag and adjust it. Oh, that's so good. That's pretty neat. Also, oh. there's a whole bunch of um, of Damn. shortcuts that you can tweak as you are adding a point. So if you create a point and you hold like shift, it's like loose um, vector. Control allows you to, this is really cool. Control allows you to change, well, if you hold control, it allows you to change the point of the the adjacent oh, handle the I'm, other yeah. side yeah i'm reading there in the in the foot ah oh yeah actually it shows down there yeah um then uh alt allows you to like freeze the the like uh flatten the handles so pretty neat as well what else um envelope modifier this is for grist pencil this demo shows also based on one of the files from the demo files how you can create it creates like some kind of um line between points and allows you to have to make this crazy style let's try it on a suzanne of course suzanne a monkey and if you add the modifier it's a gris pencil modifier allows you to you can see it very easily if you <laughs> lower the thickness the ice. <laughs> so it basically creates lines between that's a very nice effect yeah between the points you can even uh, uh wait uh if your model is very heavy watch out because it's gonna create new new lines between so new geometry basically so I, I think actually the default should be uh like not on every point but to skip every other point or something like that because otherwise it can be yeah, it can be a bit uh, heavy but if you um if you change that value, you can basically create this crazy style. As a few <clears throat> people were asking about hair. I think it's yeah. just worth mentioning that hair and any other experimental tool in Blender that you enable by going to the developer, extra, experimental. In, not in the official release. Do not show up in the official releases. Exactly. They don't even show up on the betas. Yeah. You have oh. that, and you have a few uh, experimental things, but you're not going to see these panels in beta or releases. Only in alpha or yeah, master, basically, the, the ones that you download from builder.blender.org. <clears throat> All right. Next. Well, there's a whole bunch of uh, updates as well in GM in uh, in Grease Pencil, there is a fade mode for the build modifier, so it can build and fade in the pieces at the same time. Pretty oh, neat. Nice. Um, the smooth uh, is much better. It also has a new option to keep the shape, so it doesn't like smooth and makes the shape smaller, but actually tries to keep the shape as much as possible, but still smoothing the, the points between. Um, performance is huge, a, per, a huge performance improvement and even cash to speed up the evaluation of line art objects. So yeah, speed basically, fast. Um, enhanced channels. Yes, the video sequence editor now has. It's so good, so nice. Channels. Okay, yeah. this is the, the first step and there are a few uh, things you can do with channels already. You can give it names, you can uh, mute or um, disable entire channels. So, uh, no, wait, mute and disable is the same. You can lock channels like to prevent moving them around. Is audio is still in the same, treated as the same, sorry, are audio strips still treated the same way as image uh, strips, image channels? <clears throat> yes, yeah. You yeah. don't have the <clears throat> separation we see in other software. No, okay. not yet, but it is planned to give a channels maybe a type. So you can, uh, you can sort based on type and on type, you can mute, like change the volume or apply effects one day. Um, there is even, it's a good that you ask. I don't know if you already <laughs> were planning on that, but in the code blog, which you can access by going to the developers. Oh no, I, I think I am asking too much frozen? to the, yeah, the thing froze. <clears throat> Anyway, if you go to uh, to the code blog, you're going to see the um, blog post of, by the video sequencer team that shows how you can... Uh, I work on that. Like, he, Rick, Richard was here. Ricard was here a few weeks ago. Yeah. Working with Francisco, with Sergey. 
and I guess Shouty was also involved. Because we still use the VSC for every the video sequence editor for yeah. all the you know open movie projects. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to you know once again start a new open project from scratch. Um, the new one is being directed totally in house, so we can definitely leverage having Blender as the tool from end to end. I'm I wasn't I, I haven't read the entire blog uh, blog post. <sighs> what is your job? <laughs> I saw the, the the draft which was in a different platform. And then, like for the blog post, it's like, you know what? I will read it later. Never came. I think it's came over, but look, looks pretty nice. Uh, it it is pretty say. nice. Uh, the team have done a great job in doing that. The <clears throat> I got the chat here open, so we are also checking you out here. <laughs> uh, and uh, nothing happens. We are here. The website. Look at that. It's beautiful. I'm not gonna open more windows. I think I have too many options open. Maybe this this the. the going like this fast while it's streaming all right so uh, the video sequencer improvements you can read them on uh, blender and uh, code.blender.org but there's also many more things the uh, video sequencer actually one of the, my feature favorite features uh, which is actually not even that um, uh, I mean it's more like a fix than an actual actual feature um, but if you have, a, if you want to drag and drop like a, like an object, like a, like a, like an image, for example, and you drag it and drop, you're not going to notice anything. You don't notice anything real, right? Well, in 3.1, if you drag and drop something, it would always drop it on the frame. Oh, how... <clears throat> so if you had like overwrite on and you wanted to just leave it just put it here exactly here you couldn't now you can so it's a small quality of life improvement that you don't um notice until you yeah until you 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 have it if you add via shift a that then probably still add there oh yeah 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 shift a that's the same like it, it adds it to the to the actual object. Well, maybe because you, well, it makes you, sense. Yeah, you you want to have some control over that, right? Yeah. Unless what you would add it to, like uh, Shift A, and it would start like in a like in the operator for moving. Not sure. No, no, I think it's a good one. Southern Short is online. Hey, it's Southern Shorty. <laughs> Thanks for the video. Um, what else? Create new scene from the from the sequencer. You can now create a new scene. You don't need to uh, go here and create a new one from Shift A scene. You can create it from the already existing. Wait, no, I'm I'm showing a 3.3 feature, but wait. Yeah, I remember. The actual feature is that from the scene that you have, uh, you have over here, you can create one from this menu. Okay. That is a new thing in 3. Uh, in 3.2. 3.3 allows you to create one from the menu, but it's a spoiler alert. And uh, another quality of life is that when you grab a strip over the edge, you can you, you can basically scroll. If you go up, it will scroll. That's nice. Do you know if it's using the same speed and everything from Geom from the node editor? Uh, no, it's not the same speed. I think they should match the speed, right? Um, the same no. if you go to um, to the here. If you have a bunch of, um, let's see, if you have a bunch of objects, uh, you can also do this from like this faster. That's fast. That's nice. <laughs> uh, and the geometry nodes, I think it also matches, right? I don't think it's as fast, and I, don't, I think it's kind of good. That's not that fast. Really? So if you go here, ah, it's oh, not as fast. Awesome. So the speed doesn't match, but well, what could you find the speed though? The size of the... Yeah, it depends on the zoom. The zoom level, the size. Yeah. Hmm, okay. The... <clears throat> Are you the same guy who types anything in Visual Studio and it becomes code? That coder guy. I haven't coded in... I've been coding actually recently. Yeah. More bug fixing. Do you have any feature in 3.2? Icons. Icons. Is the new jump to node icons? No, that's 3.3. Yes, 3.3 because the yeah, because we finished it in Beacon 3, which is the phase of the release no. where you're not really supposed to no. change. But if you go to the contributors page, you can see 
might see even my name actually here, yes still. if we go here to the credits page you can see the list of developers and let's see where is the the light here 10 19 commits yeah. you have 19 commits in 3.2 i don't remember what specifically no me neither it would be cool to have it here though am i do i have any yeah one commit <laughs> <laughs> yes so that... you are the guy that types something in the vs code uh, <laughs> development happens i type comments <laughs> just to be just to have my name over here i don't even know what i what i did in here but um i have some plans though for 3.3 i just wanted to finish this um right so eevee whole lot of changes under the hood shader improvements performance um the compilate the compilation progress now shown in the in the the same place that cycles uh in the top left corner uh but yeah whole bunch of changes in preparation for EV next in the future. EV 2.0. Animation and ring also a bunch of improvements in the NLA, in the motion, in, in sorry, motion, in the uh, graph editor, in the dope sheet. Um, the, the post library has been deprecated. The that old... is a big, long, long time coming. Yep, it's gone. It's now uh, legacy. Oh, the post library. Yeah, I was thinking. Post library. Yeah. Well, and the. Uh, are you you're thinking about think the proxy? Proxies. Yeah, proxies has been gone already for some time, I guess. It is. Look at that proxies. Oh, it's there already. Okay, it was also yeah. this release. <laughs> it was in this release. Yeah, no, it was in this release. In three point two was deprecated, and three point. Uh, sorry, three point was deprecated. Three point two is gone for good because. There is a whole bunch of uh, improvements in um, in the UI and the performance is now up to 10 times faster to re-sync a library. So if you load something and you want to, I don't know, you change a constraint in a character and you want to reload it, should be up to 10 times faster and a whole bunch of updates, mainly UI. Coming. Yeah, but this is really coming in the next release. That's why I remember we're talking about should we highlight this on the release notes or not. So it's working that uh, has been happening for usability and performance. But for 3.3, we're going to have it way more fleshed out. And we're going to have hopefully the so called cherry picked. Oh. Uh, it's the current name. Is that announced anywhere? Or you're just dropping a bomb here? I don't know. A lot of the things we do is it's public. Everything we do Everything is, is public. public. Yeah, actually, yeah. and there is a task given about it. Yeah, now that I remember. Mm -hmm. So uh, Patrick is asking, what replaces proxies? Library overrides. Library this, is overrides. A new, this is a new system. Well, new. It's been there for a while. Even in two point nine, I think there was already the beginnings of it. It's taking a while, but it's basically the foundations for anything related to library linking, appending, replacing properties, overriding properties of linked, like being able to use, like if you make the minions, now you can make minions with Blender. You have one minion <laughs> and you duplicate it and each one is going to have its own action, which was not possible with the old proxy system. So that's a big one. Next. Um, well, Python stuff, user interface, the um, swap areas between separate windows. Yeah, you can swap uh, between, if you have multi windows, you can swap from one to the other. So you can grab basically an editor and put it somewhere else. That's pretty cool. Snapping, this is so cool. Snapping, if you uh, ever used the node editor and the viewport, you may remember that when you enabled the snapping, it would enable also here and the same way if <laughs> there was no relation basically snapping this would snap the objects and that was super annoying um next the oh that's nice the voxel size display units yes if you use well we already used it before but yeah. basically if you do a shift r now it shows you in meters centimeters why so big huh why so large <laughs> wait is it <laughs> I didn't even, oh yeah. Why is it big? Is maybe the size of the window? No. Or is it, oh no, is it an absolute? No. It's, it is absolute. The, the more far away you are? No. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a bit much. Yeah. I mean, it could be this size. 
and yeah, it's, it's, that will be just fine. So it should be, yeah, okay. It's a bug. It's not a bug, it's a, it's a, it's a trick. It's a little, um, what? Easter egg. Easter egg. That's one way of calling a paper cut. Uh, markers, improvements. Yeah, markers have changed the shortcut mainly to how uh, you can rename them. Now you can rename with F2, just like any other object uh, in the... The NLA also now allows you to rename strips with um, F2. What else? Um, compositor, there's new notes. Combine and separate X, Y, Z. Uh, that's, like, that's a very interesting one. That is, that to me would be an example of the Mandela effect. Like I would have swear that we had those notes with those notes already. You never really need it because you always had a, the, the separate RGB. Which combined. is the same basically, yeah. right? But now you have them just for consistency. Uh, VR, there is support for HTC Vive Focus 3 controllers, um, camera landmark from session. So you can basically go into one uh, even with the session without having the, the, the camera active, you can go and maybe make this a new camera. Nice. Uh, you can also hide individual parts of or in different type object types. So the same way you hide a mesh, armature, whatever, you can control this now in VR as well. Pretty neat. Um, WebP format for compression, only for static images, not for an animation yet, but uh, one step at a time. FBX, BVH, and uh, uh, inform, uh, GLTF per improvements. I didn't add it here. Oh no. But the GLTF exporter uh, and importer has been completely refactored. And uh, well, Salvan showed, uh, showed it in the uh, in the video, but I need, it, I need to add it here. I need to remember. Um, yeah, so many, so many improvements. Do you see anything else that I'm missing out? I was curious about the last one in the car. Support for Woof and Woof too. Woof, Woof, yes, for dogs. <laughs> now, fonts uh, is uh, the open font mm. um, file formats. Uh, it's it's pretty common. Actually, uh, every website online, you're not uh, like websites don't use TTF, um, which is an optimized. Don't add it. Just display. Yeah, and also format. also open like actual really uh, mm -hmm. open format. So yeah. Um, what um, else? Actually, we have oh, Chinese uh, uh, language for numerical entries. It's also very important. Um, improve error managers. I mean, whole bunch of, of updates everywhere. If you use OneDrive, now there's a shortcut if you use Windows. Um, oh, improve dragging of preview thumbnails. That is a small one, but in the asset browser or, well, any browser, basically, if you um, it would happen that, why is it taking so long to... It's compiling the, not compiling, compiling the shader to create the material thumbnail. This thing, mm -hmm. I w can I, can I not have to, <laughs> I would, if, if there was an option to hide this thing, I would, I would enable it. Um, this, this waiting time kills your joy, kills my joy, my inner joy. Um, but anyway, the here this the action zone is now much larger. You can actually grab from anywhere, <laughs> and the same when you do file open on a, um, for example, anywhere. If you go here and uh, you can, um, oh, in, nice. in the thumbnail preview, you can basically cl click in more places. <laughs> um, that is all. I think I we mentioned everything. Some people were mentioning. Uh, bugs or potential performance regressions. If you find them, you go to developer.blender.org. Actually, no. You go to Blender to help and report a bug. Yes. The best way to make sure the problem can be looked at it. Go help, help and report a bug. The way, you, uh, the reason why you use this link is that when you report a bug, it's going to fill in some information about the nothing personal, no personal data, uh, only the, well, unless you call the Linux kernel version something very personal to you, um, but like it shows uh, basically which graphics card you have, uh, the driver version, which is very important for developers and um, yeah, your Windows or Linux or Mac OS version and the version, this very specific version hash 
uh, that you were using at the moment. So that's why it's better if you use the link within Blender other than uh, using the link here. Uh, but yeah, no editor does not appear. Okay, that's a really bad one. <laughs> How? Why? Based on the default startup and an attached blend file. Archived. It's, it's already archived. Okay, yeah. it's missing information. It doesn't, doesn't, if you go up there, <clears throat> here's in point. This is a bug report that wasn't even created from Blender. You see the version of the Blender is not there. When it last worked is not there. Oh, yeah, there is nothing actually. Oh. It was 2.80. Ah, this is an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, please, people. Actually, this is a really good example. There's <laughs> no operating system, no graphics card, there's no info. So, yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, that is all. Thanks to all this people that have been contributing to this, especially to Oksana who uh, prepared the blend file that you can download here and made it nicer because yeah, there was a lot of paint over that she uh, migrated into to Blender. So super nice. Thank you Southern Shorty for making this and uh, the video and everybody that contributed uh, here. And you know, you can uh, join the development fund if you want to see more of this cool stuff happening. Um, Five more people, actually, today when I checked, it was 12, 29, uh, 25. So five people. Nice. Today joined. I saw a graph of the monthly contribution going up. The, from, from five the, the, the money contribution. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not it's different than individuals, I know. It is. So uh, nice. um, yeah, so that is uh, exciting. But actually, if you look at the, 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 the press releases from previous, um, the number of individuals hasn't it's still the same than in the last release. Three months? Yes. Oh, wow. It's uh, like in the, if you go to, to, to slash press, the last press release shows um, 2.9, 1 actually. I wrote this and I remember saying more than <laughs> 2,900, uh, which is, it is, it is interesting, right? That's but uh, I always wanted to have a graph for this number. Yeah. One day, one day. It really stagnated. I don't know exactly why. And I, well, we don't, we don't promote. I never talked about it often in the, in the live stream, but, uh, but yeah, it is important though, because then this number keeps going up, but, uh, <laughs> if any of this <laughs> leave, the number will go down significantly. So, it's, and we it's... did mention a few of the de developments, which were only possible because of the dev fund. Yes. Which you can see, you can read here exactly who is getting, a. Uh, uh, who's who's basically living um, by developing Blender? Yeah. Lucas Togner is new. Yiming Wu is also currently uh, richer for the VSE. Patrick, um, yeah, Philips, uh, yeah, so many, so many people are contributing to this. Are you gonna mention my presentation? I am. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had it in the. Um, there is actually some questions in the in this. I don't know if you want to hang out here and read a bit about it. I would love to, but I need to rehearse for my presentation I have tonight. Which is a good uh, segue to your Twitter account, where you're just chilling on a 9,000... Uh, Peace jigs puzzle. Peace jigs. <laughs> um, is this the Netherlands? Is it like a Dutch? It thing? is a Dutch ship, yes. Okay. Bombarding the RGR. That's pretty neat. Such as what you are going to talk about in a, what, three hours? within three hours in Portuguese, but with English subtitles. English, I think it's dubbing. Dubbing even live. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And of course it's online. So it's going to be online forever, but everyone is welcome to join. If you want to hear, uh, listen a little bit about the Blender and geometry nodes, with particularly emphasis on the, devel the development process. How was the relation with the studio? in the Sprite Fright project, and then more recently with the project Heist for hair. So stay tuned. So you're going to talk about hair. I will mention hair in the end, yes. And I got a beautiful render from Andy, just fresh out of his computer. Oh, spoiler. Using the new system? Using the new system. So you can, you can render already or mm -hmm. convert it to particles. He's on the weekly folder if you want to spoil to the world. Um, well, it's a, sneak, it's a sneak peek, yes. So share what? Uh, weekly share studio, studio weekly weeklies today Andy it's the second one second one oh ooh. is in this out of this world so we still don't have a good uh, an option to have a curve profile yeah 
So, so far what we got recently, you know, Hans and Jack work on that is basically the, um, a radius from the curve, so you can see them with Eevee. But ah. you still need to properly shape the, the hair and that's still coming. That that's is so cool. nice. Nice, the, the all right. The work the team is doing on this project is, I love it. Yeah, and the proxy <laughs> hat, but uh, hey, <laughs> hey, one thing at a time. But yeah, this is where, <laughs> where we keep, uh, well, we can actually see what else Andy has been working on. Nice. Perks of working with a Creative Common. <laughs> you can show everything. You can show everything. Perks what did he have to do? Okay. He actually, oh, no, this is actually a spoiler from the film itself. But there is some uh, some some work by uh, by Rick. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. That's so cool. This team works so much. It's awesome. If you want to see more of this, by the way, and the other way you have to contribute to Blender if you don't want to join the development fund and you want to get something in return is by joining the Blender Studio. So, yes. Where exactly? In the blog. No, in the film. No, in the film. Project, the project heist. heist. And then production logs. This is where you can see more if you were uh, subscribed or logged in. And then you can see more, basically. A wrench by Simon Thomas. Animation by Paolo Furni, uh, character by Julian Casper, and yeah, basically everything that we were looking at. Even spoilers, actually the film. And this hair over there, that's the, um, that's still the old hair. It is the old one. Yeah, which was then converted to the new system and then uh, improved with the new tools. Interesting. Pretty nice. Wow. So much. I don't think we're promoting. We are we even tweeting about this stuff? No. I don't know. I don't think so. That's but yeah, a... this is a, and this is a project which is very exciting because it's being rendered entirely with Eevee. Yeah. Um, someone was asking that. Ah, okay, and now, I know, and now I know. they know. <laughs> now they know. No, actually, we haven't tweeted at all about the Project Heist project. That's amazing. What's the communication department doing in this this building? All right, let's. Um, I, I, well, 18 questions. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of them, but um, <clears throat> I'll try to answer a few. Uh, do you need to go? Do you want to stay for three questions? Yes. The first one is actually quite long. Okay, who... Uh, now we, I, now you can actually see who voted for the, for the questions, by the way. And you can see that everybody likes to... I mean, if you write something, you actually like what you write. Oh, okay. You can like your own. Yeah, you can like your own uh, comments. Um, Go ahead. Like the first one. Is the there first one, one question there? Yes. I was. Well, uh, where is the question? The per in, right in the first paragraph. I think that's the question. Uh, I was wondering if we get the node-based particle system. Node phase physics. Actually, we have someone. Mm -hmm. I, I can talk about that. So when you were talking about physics in the beginning of the year, thinking about simulation, right? We decided to first support hair and then eventually particle system as we had before. If you put together in a graph what we have now, which is basically animation tools with geometry nodes. Yeah. If you look at what people are doing, it looks a lot like simulation. But really it's animation. It can go to frame hundred and you have it there. Yeah. While simulation is something that depends on the result of the previous evaluated frame. That's how you find simulations, okay. yeah. So we have in a spectrum, we have animation on the on the far left. And then we have a physics, sorry, we have any physics on the other side. And then in between we have simulation. So we're probably going to focus first on simulation to allow things like uh, fireworks and what we saw originally with the particle system, particle system node. But this is further down the line after hair. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So the effort we had, uh, so the time for that is being used for, for the hair project. And it's being worked on right now. Actually, um, we have Hans and Jack working uh, here at the studio at the moment, mm -hmm. currently. All right, so second question. Is there a nice guide on how to write feature proposals? Uh, no. Actually, no. We... No. There's we... a way of doing it, but it's step number one is to get involved with the module, help there, try to help test the existing patches, try to see... Uh, how it can actually be of, you know, basically help and be involved in the development process. And then in the future, down the line, your input when it comes to the pipeline can be appreciated. 
or you can write in your own media and whatnot. But the modules and the development of Blender are really centered among people that which are involved that are aligned with the agenda for the module. Yeah. Hi, Pablo and Dalai. All the work towards VR support for Blender has been phenomenal. I was wondering if there is any plans to support color management while in VR. I can't see why not. Yeah. As someone mentioned, it's probably a bug or something that is not being prioritized. But it should, right? I don't see why not. Yeah, it should. Yeah. There's no... Yeah. Okay, two more questions. Hey, because we are already actually over an hour. Um, and you said half an hour, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Pablo and Dalai. When will Blender add Edge and Face groups? And hopefully never. <laughs> I really hoped that... There even... the attributes, right? Yeah, that's the thing. I hoped even vertex groups was uh, could be removed in favor of a more generic attribute solution and then sure we can have any kind of group yeah and and uh, in the end you will end up with something similar to how you can create color attributes and have different domains and just add different domains right yeah. because that. the system there needs allows you to separate right you have edge stuff face stuff yeah, I guess it's just convenient to have a group so you can set, you can name it. But right now, I could even use an integer um, oh, yeah, attribute, right. yeah. but that's not convenient. No, no. But now we have name attributes. Right. Um, do you know if there is going to be present preset paintbrushes? We actually talked about it. We really, really hope it will. No, it, it will. We don't know when, but it will. I don't promise things which are not. Life with a clear is design. long. And live is forever, so the live streams are forever. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, we do, uh, having a better brush management would benefit not only sculpting, but the painting project, which is being you know, in the works, but also hair and everything jump to note related. So more and more, I think we're converging with different projects, really, really needing a decent brush management system. So there's, I, I have a strong belief that's going to happen. I don't know when, because we need a good design in a team and everything. Yes, but I really hope that we can at least define a design soon. Oh, yeah. No, and then whoever uh, weren't going to work on it, I don't know. Whoever but... needs it the most. Uh, developers. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works sometimes. <laughs> okay, well, the curves, I mean, if you make a brush for curve painting. Yeah, we, we, we will need it as well. We'll see. Yeah. It's in the agenda, but a bit fuzzy on when and how. And what? So, is in the agenda. Yeah. Can't wait to see you in October. Oh, Blender yeah. Conference. Yes. Conference. Dot, uh, dot local, no? Conference. Dot blend. That's the name I use for developing. Blender.org. It's where you're going to see some information about the upcoming Blender Conference. Tickets and the call for presentations are going to be um, late June. What does it mean? Why, why so late June? Well, we said June actually, and two days ago I changed this to late June because the release and next week there's not going to be a live stream because uh, most of the team are going to be, well, I do the live stream, so I, and I'm gonna, not going to be here. I'm going to be in Annecy. Are you going to do a live, live stream from there? We have mobile driving people mobile data with what with my phone with like <laughs> internet at uh, at these places is usually yeah. terrible but that means you have more time to prepare presentations to send for the blender conference yes um the presentation the open the call for presentation are gonna be uh, later at the same time maybe later this uh, maybe not next week but the week after and then you're also gonna be able to buy the tickets which there will be plenty. There's no, I don't think it's going to sold out in like a few days. No, I'm because... telling people that's probably going to be sold out because I don't like the false scarcity. So don't buy if you can't or don't plan to come. But a lot of people are coming this year for the, for the Blender conference. Actually, yeah, we haven't had a conference since 2.8 was out. And I think uh, the Blender community has grown a lot in 2.8, yeah. 0.9, and 3, and 3.1, 3.2. Okay, oh. yes. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Forget what I said. If you want to read more about the events that Blender is going to this year, or actually the Blender team is going to, check out in the homepage of Blender.org. There is a Blender events uh, entry here, Blender at Seagraph, 
Annecy, Annecy being the first one. Next week already, from the 13th to the 18th, we're gonna be there. We're gonna have a booth even um, where we're gonna be demoing and even we're gonna have the part of the Grease Pencil team. Daniel Martinez Lara is gonna be there demoing how to create storyboards using Grease Pencil and the new uh, features in 3.3. Annecy is in the city of Annecy and the south of France. I'm not going to search for this because I'm going to show my Google Maps with all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, next, um, the after Annecy, one month, two months after, Seagraph, Vancouver, and that's where... It's going to be so nice. It's going to be so where nice. I lived, but also the entire computer graphics community <laughs> of the planet. Yes. It's always special to for me to go back to Vancouver, but to also have more people over to be able to show around Vancouver. I think it still is the mecca of 3D and 3D animation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I don't know the animation. There is animation yeah. per se. There is uh, with with uh, Annecy and with CTN and okay. but uh, computer graphics, like yeah, where you yeah. see the future of of what computer graphics is and what the render man has. Yeah, People but I'm, I'm, but I'm thinking about this school. I'm not talking even about Seager, but Vancouver itself. You have so many art schools oh, there. Sorry, yeah. You have so many studios moving to Vancouver, filming in Vancouver. So it's very special to have a Seagraph there as well. So yeah. Seagraph is going to be there with a booth. With a booth. Yeah, actually, uh, the biggest booth we ever had is going to be um, a whole unit, I think. I think. Uh, yeah. 10 by 10? Yeah, 10 by 10. At this, at uh, NEC also, we're going to get the biggest we ever had. It's going to be 6 by 6, I think, which is not, I mean, 6 meters, quite big. It's a lot of feet. And then um, after, C well, see if it's going to be iconic, please get in touch. Actually, if you want to see the exhibition floor, you can get a free ticket, a discount, by using the SBF. 22 code when you register so make sure you use that if you are in vancouver or nearby and want to drop by say hi blender conference is the last event of the year the big event of the year where the blender team gets together and is the highlight of the year everybody will and i think the venue is so big that maybe it won't sold out maybe not it's about six or seven hundred six hundred people at least it's gonna be it's huge, 600 people, right? We're not going to be able to talk to... It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Please, if you are in around here, consider it. Other than that, I think we can call it a day. Thanks for dropping by. It's in a bit, oh, a bit of an hour, but it's good to 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 do this. Oh, the thanks for... Release parties. Yeah, yeah, it was super nice. We tend to sometimes not a knowledge that the release is happening. Everyone is so focused on the new features, on the everyday, day-to-day -day work. Yeah. So in the past, we would try to maybe have a pizza party or to have a... There's no pizza? There's no pizza. I don't no, know. No I cake, no pizza. We could, if you could still get hold of Tony, we could try to get a... No, Tony is right. <laughs> so he won't be for the pizza, but maybe we could try to see if people want to hang around. We're yeah. also having a ping pong tournament this week, so everyone's very... Busy Not everyone. For that. <laughs> but anyhow, it's important to acknowledge the release, to welcome the community again, invite everyone to try the new features, to report bugs, to share, to celebrate. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Pablo, as well. Oh, thank you for dropping by. I hope to see you more often. Actually, we should talk about when, whenever there is new hair stuff, um, we should yeah, get love together. To, to come here more often, or sure. I should call, now there is Jack here, we can call, call uh, Jack, Hans, you. Leave you all guys here and... Uh, you should do it this week then because they leave Friday. Both? Yes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Maybe there's going to be another live stream before that. <laughs> Thanks everyone. And uh, see you sometime, same, someplace, sometime, someplace for the next Blender Today Live. Is it here? All right. Uh, thanks for, for being here. I will see you Hello. soon. Bye. Ciao, ciao. There.